obviously getting control of all those gold piles and you know he's 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 mining gold in the far corner of the map and there's just no TC no castle to protect it I mean, what what what's that what's doubt gonna say to that he's just like okay that's so easy easy Right, and you also could see that Chris was struggling a little bit with his economy, right? So apparently the aggression from Doubt, even though he wasn't really able to kill many villagers, I guess it was just keeping Chris very busy because he just got his economy in a mess, right? At some point he had 1,000 gold and barely no food and barely any food. So I uh, guess the aggression from Doubt really paid off, even though he didn't really kill many villagers, right? Yeah, yeah. It, I, I, it's, it's hard to handle aggression like that because... If you're open on multiple angles, and we saw it in this game, you see uh, Doubt coming in, splitting his army into two. Um, Chris reacts to one half of Doubt's army with his entire army, and then Doubt's on the other side of his base, raiding villages, forcing idle time, uh, causing Chris's economy to uh, take a bit of a downhill, uh, downhill slope, I guess. And Doubt from there just kept the pressure on, and it worked out really well for him. Anyway, they won't be losing too much time here. We're just about to start the game two. Game two is going to be free pick. Every player is able to pick the civilization they want to, with the small exception that no hunts can be picked, no Mayan, and no Aztecs. Well, many times we do end up seeing the same civilizations like Mongols, Celts, or Chinese. I've seen Chris speaking Chinese many, many times. Yeah. It's, uh, a couple of seconds to see what will their first picks be. I would hope, I uh, would expect sort of Mongols. I think Mongols for doubt. And what about Mongols, Ma Britons, Celts? That's uh, yeah. Mongols for Chris <laughs> and Celts for Doubt. I think this is the first nice. time that Doubt actually went for a Celts before going for Mongols. That's an interesting pick. You know what I'm hoping to see? I don't think we're going to be seeing it, but I'm hoping to see a Byzantines war at some point. You know, two guys from the old generation of Age of Empires playing, playing yeah. Byzantines war. How good would that be? That would be really awesome. I'd like, you know, I, I think this is where the team random game can come into play and throw some really interesting sieves out there. Uh, but yeah, generally speaking, when it's down to, to sieve picks or hidden sieves in this situation, it's generally going to be those big sieves like Mongols, Celts, Britons, uh, even like you say, Chris with his Chinese. In fact, I think he might even go for Chinese next time around. And uh, yeah, it, it's generally going to be those those big big sieves, but. Those team random games, they're the ones that kind of throw the interesting sieves out there, and we'll look forward to seeing what that has in store for us. Well, interesting enough, and it looks like Doubt is not very interested in scouting his own map. He's sending his scout right towards Chris. Did right he away. see everything that he's got? He can see, no, he didn't see one of his boards, at least. I guess he's not really caring about that. Unfortunately for him, he's searching on the wrong spot. He's going to the very right side of the map, and Chris is a little bit further away. I guess he could see I that board. Well, well he's going to be running straight toward the TC from Chris, and this could be Karma playing a trick on him. No, he just turned at the right moment. He'll see the house. He'll see the yeah, house. He'll see the the hells, perfect. he can see berries, he can might see be boar, able surely? to see the boar. Oh, no, he so just close. missed it. He just missed it. Anyway, well, talk about not laming Zach. Yeah, exactly. I mean, these guys <laughs> taking every advantage they can get, I guess. But honestly, right now, doubt is not too bad. I mean, you take a risk sending a scout forward that quickly. He's found the boar, actually. I think he might come and lay. He's gonna it take right it. Now. He's gonna He's take gonna it. Go He's gonna take it. Gonna there it is. It. There it is. And uh, are we gonna see a reaction here yes. for Chris? Because I really think that Chris wouldn't be expecting that. Are we gonna see a reaction in the chat? Uh, I know well, Chris, I like drama. If he sees the boar going, if the boar's running back, boar's running back. Yep, uh, he just. That's gonna it. go for it again, I think. I mean, Chris has got his scout nearby. If he'd have noticed the boar running through the fog, he could have brought his scout over, and uh, he could actually intercept that and actually maybe uh, block the boar so that it runs back. If he notices, he's got to notice though, and maybe he's. I he's think he just did that in. now. He's moving yep. in, yeah. yeah he just go. saw that now. He's going to be moving straight into the scout. And good for him. He's got everything explored. So he knows exactly where the board be running. And I do have to say, Doubt is on very, very low HP here. Chris is going to be able to catch him. That's for sure. It's still really, really hard to actually try to stop a boar lure like this. And I would assume that Doubt is not going to mess this one up. I think Chris was just well. a little bit too slow reacting. What might help in the Zach here is that very, very narrow passage here between the wood lines. That might actually help him 
Yeah, possibly. I mean, he is going to try, obviously, and, and block the ball, maybe attack the scout here. But uh, if Chris can get his ball back, that's going to be huge. But look at the time on the clock. It's too late to call a restart now. And if yeah, and the VAR stopped. The VAR stopped. Pretty huge. There you go. There, there you go. go. I'm and... a little behind you, I think. Just a little bit. There we go. <laughs> He's going to be taking a villager. He's going to be taking a villager. Take the board. There it is. So the lame oh, is still going to be happening. Unfortunate for Chris. Is Chris maybe going to try to block here the villager? He might be able to do that. He can do this very nicely. Oh. There it is. Taking a a lot of hits this villager very very nice job i think this villager is gonna go down it's an incredible oh, movement no. here by chris lovely it does it there it is it's gonna Oy. go down the villager the <laughs> boar is still there though the boar is still there in doubt's possession but Man. was that really worth it at this but worth it at this point i don't know the lamer the lamer gets lamed that's what happens right there and hey you know what chris if he's feeling, if he finds the boar on the right side, he could still steal back. Because Doubt's not taking that boar just yet. He's going to go out now, so not going to have the opportunity to do that. Uh, I apologize. I was a few seconds behind you there on the on the recorded. Oh, no, my mistake. The, my the mistake. But, yeah, uh, if you just yeah. press forward, fast forward, that yeah, should fix it. Yeah, I'm now. We're all good. We're all good. Well, unfortunately for Chris here, he won't be able to stop that third boar from just landing nice and easy under Doubt's TC. And I guess, well, he's killed. I guess as a Mongol, so that's gotta hurt really a lot to actually lose one of your boars. As far as I can see, Chris does not have any deer close by, does he? Yeah, he's and... taking the deer down at oh, the south. Oh, he's taking them like, here. Yeah. Yep, I guess it's that's... Kind of... Yeah, it's gonna Awkward. sort of pay, right? It's gonna pay for yeah. it, I guess. But still, as you can see, when you play with Mongols many, many times, if you're not rushing, which seems to be the case by Chris here, you want to go up at 20 population, maybe even uh, maybe even 19 population. I've seen that before. And as you can see, Chris is struggling. He's got now the population 22, a little bit late considering it's a Mongol player. Yeah, I mean, Chris here, obviously, you know, having to react to having his boss stolen there. Um, I, I feel like, you know, he, he had to take that, he had to take that mill down on those, on those deer, but there was only three deer in that deer patch by the looks of things. So it's less than ideal for Chris at the moment. I mean, you know, it, doubts really forced him to react quite heavily and quite badly to this. He's out of sheep and, you know, he needs to get wood now so he can throw down. Uh, I was going to say throw down a stable, but he's actually on gold right now. Yeah, I, interesting. man at arms looking to be yeah, very much be. like men at arms i gonna would be. i would assume that right only two villagers on gold yep. that's usually what players do and uh, maybe, love it maybe chris could try to take a hit here from that scout nope he wasn't paying attention i guess he could try to get one hit on that scout that scout very low hp from doubt and doubt himself is going to be moving in now with his drush i don't think chris can see this one well he can see the dead body of the wolf depending <laughs> if he's looking at it but this could actually be good for chris here because by the time doubt gets there i think he will be able to release his own drush and maybe have man at harm's the time well we have to see yeah, I mean, obviously right now he saw the uh, the barracks out, he saw that Drush coming in, and now he's going to have to defend it. But he's futile, and we're going to see that Mana Arms upgrade for sure, I imagine uh, he's going to be doing that. But uh, he's actually moved more villagers out to gold right now, so he might actually switch it up completely. Might just uh, we'll skip have to it. wait nope, and see. There it is, nope, there he's it is. Going for he's going to anyway. be doing it. I don't like that he's chasing those militia with two villagers, and maybe chase it with one. He doesn't even need to be chasing it with one, considering the scout is there. He lost a little bit of time there. I was just trying to see... See if Doubt is getting any big advantage from this. He's going to lose his rush, that's for sure. But I guess it's good for him. That gives him just about enough time, Zach, to try to completely wall himself. And I don't see much of a chance of Chris stopping this now. Because a couple more Palisades here, uh, close to the stone, close to the gold. And he's going to be fully walled. Oh yeah, exactly. And this is really nice. And obviously Chris, he's got those three mana arms. He will be able to push out with them. They do have an attack bonus versus buildings, so he can work on breaking down the wall. But yeah, your dad's going to have enough time to get this completed. He's going up to the feudal age now on 27 population, and that's with just one militia alive. He's not got his scout right now, so 26... Uh, sorry, oh, he has got his scout, my bad. 25 villagers even. I would be very surprised if he would be able to actually uh, keep that militia alive. He's so far he's doing that. I guess he'd be going to try to bring the scout and try and Hero help villager. him. But there's, yeah, there's just no chance. Even the scout, he does have the plus two. But I don't think is that going to be enough. No, unfortunately for him, there it goes the scout as well. But Chris, knowing what might be happening here at Doubt Space, going aggressive with uh, villagers, we're going to be seeing a tower here, and I do like this. Chris knows his only chance now is to play aggressive because Doubt might be looking to go for a fast castle here.
Yeah, sure. And, you know, a, a good opportunity for a, a tower here on that wood line, perhaps on the front, could be interesting. Obviously, the main stone for Doubt is also on this right-hand side. So a couple of towers here could be really awkward. Could also deny him access to stone as well. And uh, it looks like Chris is even going to make it in with those. Yeah, that villager. The, arms even at the back. Yeah, that, that wolf post, was man. just uh, the biggest <laughs> friend that Chris could ever hope for. Then it is Hell that yeah. wolf is going to allow Chris to just run in with his three man at arms and do Keep in mind that Delt was probably trying to go for a fast castle. I'm not sure if he's still going to be trying to do that. He's uh, Yes, uh, he's going to go for the blacksmith. Uh, a little bit risky in my opinion. The villager is going to go the down. He's got an archer. Is that going to be enough? I don't know. No, uh, he's he. If he goes for a fast castle now, it, it's incredibly risky still. Because I mean, you gotta bear in mind, Chris is in. He's throwing up a tower on the front. He's gonna find a villager on that gold as well. And this is there really nice for Chris. Lovely stuff. And uh, obviously here. Doubt has to add more archers. If he stops making archers, he could be in trouble. And uh, Chris, what a great play. What a great play. I love the way he acknowledged the situation. He knew that Doubt was certainly trying to go for a fast castle. A little bit of luck there with the wolf. If uh, it wasn't for that wolf right there, I think Doubt would have been able to complete the walls. Down. But another villager down. Awesome job here by Chris Huge. with those uh, three man-at-arms. Uh, he's got a couple of archers. was able to deny another wood line from Doubt here. The only thing I'm not too sure about this tower is that it's actually not going to allow him to get inside Doubt's walls, right? I was sort of hoping yeah, to see it yeah. close to a palisade. Yeah, this is interesting now. I mean, Doubt's going up castle. It's the right thing to do. I mean, he's defended from the Man at Arms, for sure. Uh, that tower on the front certainly going to be annoying. Make things a little awkward for, for Doubt. you got to bear in mind, look at his wood situation now. They're really exposed to these archers on the left side. Chris doesn't have Fletching, though, so I don't think he'll easily pick a villager. Doubt should be able to keep them safe, but wood situation looking awkward. Very awkward. Well, another villager just went down to the tower, and I think that was the wow. second one, at least, and he needs to move away. So Chris doing everything that he can. You can see that he's still quite far away from going to Castle H. I do wonder, he's, uh, he only had one archery range all this time. And what about Dao? Dao apparently is going to be moving out with those archers. He's not too concerned about those archers from Chris. I think this is a little bit too risky. I'm not sure. Uh, it's so risky right now. I mean, Dao, how is he going to be making more archers when he runs out of, uh, out of wood? I mean, wood is so important. He needs to get some kind of safe wood income at the moment and doubt might have to double back and kill those archers on that left hand wood line chris now has got fletching so he's gonna have a little extra range on those villagers as well it looks like doubt will push out the wolves coming in slowing him down a little bit but he's gonna be moving out and chris should have a few units in defense but at the moment um we see fletching for doubt no defense upgrades. We see Chris with plus one plus one. Doubt doing crossbow though, and that should be enough to give him the advantage here fighting at Chris's base. I gotta tell you, I, I'm not sure this was the correct decision by Dow. In my opinion, he should have took care of those archers first. First, because yeah. Because sure. I don't know. He's only got the plus one now. He does have more range. He's got the technology advantage. He apparently was no. not patrolling, <laughs> and that means right off the bat, Chris manages to land a very nice shot onto those crossbows. And a little bit of a problem here for Dow. My opinion, he can't really push anymore from that hill. Chris probably is going to be adding a couple of skirmishers. No, he's not doing that. He's feeling comfortable. And Doubt, oh, let's yeah. stick a list. Uh, yeah, look at that. It's 25 villagers for Doubt. He's really, Doubt's really struggling. Doubt's got a big problem here. He can't afford a second archery range. And you know, he's he's trying Let to get alone on that. the side. Let alone Chris. that. Oh, but Chris, Chris moving into those in. two archers. Yeah, that could be a big, big problem for Doubt as well. Doubt's still moving around with those crossbows, not really doing much. There goes the villager down. There's one on a very low HP, there goes another one, maybe a third one on the way, at some fight. point oh my oh god, my at, at some this point is Doubt is going to be clearing this off, but another villager goes down, what and an awesome one. job here, oh what my an awesome gosh, job this is huge, Chris needs to just focus down those weak villagers and they're surely going to go down, maybe oh even my. another one as well, oh goodness me what a mess for Doubt right now Chris really owning this one at the moment, he's owning every wood line, he's saying, you know, Doubt, you are not building a second archery range today, this is not happening, you are not having any wood today, and uh, yeah, Doubt, really unable to really hit back, he's, he's trying to find an angle at Chris's farms here, but he's still not picked a villager off, and the villager advantage for Chris nearly doubling Doubt's villager count at this stage.
It's almost 20 villagers. You really don't see this every oh, day. Man. At least at a minute 20 of a game. Unfortunately for Dao, of course, Chris, Chris took measures to uh, to try to stop Dao from just moving into that wood line. He dropped a couple of houses, dropped a blacksmith right there. And that means Dao is in a very, very dire situation at this point. He doesn't really have many lumberjacks uh, left. Let me take a look at that. How many are those? Yeah, I can see nine lumberjacks, three farmers, and that's it. And you wow. can't really claim you've got an economy. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a village yeah. distribution. A problem here is Doubt is, you know, he's not really distributing his economy that well. He's actually set himself up for double archery range production, and he's actually got only one range, so he's got a surplus of gold at the moment. Uh, but he is still doing damage on the problem here. Uh, obviously, the range of Unfortunately, it just went a little bit robotic on me. Maybe you should try to rejoin, Zach. Uh, TeamSpeak seems to be playing up a little bit. Or maybe say something now. Hello? It's a little robotic. Yeah, I guess you can hear me like that as well. Just try rejoining maybe, Zach, and I'll just pull you in. And I'll just keep on uh, casting the game. Looks like Dal this time around going to be trying to move in Good there between the stone and the... Uh, well, I guess TeamSpeak is playing up and not just... Yeah, TeamSpeak itself is playing up. I will try to rejoin anytime soon. Anyway, this battle could be incredibly important. And it looks to me like Dao was actually able to take a couple of those archers down, but losing too much in the process. And every single crossbow that goes down here is a very, very big thing for uh, Dao, of course. Let me see if Zero, if Zack joins us back. I'll be trying to keep an eye on that. I'm so sorry about this, guys. Uh, there's nothing that I can do. Apparently, the TeamSpeak server is playing up a little bit. Hopefully, things are going to get fixed very, very soon. Chris up to Castle H. Uh, he was a little bit later there. I guess Dowd here with a Manganel is the right move. He definitely needs to try to take down those archers uh, from Chris, or that could take him a very, very long time. Uh, let me see. Zack is still not here. Yeah, as far as I can see, Zack is still not here, so I'll just try to message him. Rejoin TS. Seems to be good again. So Zach is going to be joining, and once more, I apologize for this. Let me see if I can uh, get hold of what's happening here. That this Manganel could be a very, very big problem here for Chris. Let me see what is he's going to try to do. To your channel. Okay. Hello, hello, yeah, hello, yeah, welcome back, welcome back. <laughs> uh, apparently, the server was just playing up a little bit. I apologize for that, guys. Anyway, this Manganel could be a huge difference here, Zach. Yeah, I kind of lost track of the game for a minute there, but yeah, it looks like Doubt actually being able to kind of claw his way back into this one. What's actually going on right now? This is crazy. Uh, Doubt with the with the Manganel, yeah, could do some work with that if Chris is caught out of position. But Chris is going to throw up a siege workshop of his own and get ready to counter that with his own Manganels now. Well, I guess this is all in here for Doubt. He's going to be doing a monastery, probably sort of expecting to see one knight from Chris to probably try to snipe off those mangonels. Of course, Doubt needs to be very, very careful with those mangonels. He definitely does not want to lose any one of them, especially not to a TC. It's a third mangonel. This could actually be really, really dangerous here for Chris. Chris is only on one TC as well. Probably going to come down to the mangonel micro here. That was a nice shot, by the Ooh, way. Very nice. Very nice. Onto this crossbow. That all really weak right now. Yeah, this is kind of a big deal because Chris, he doesn't have the stone for a second town center since he built that tower on the front, remember, from earlier on. So this TC taking a huge beating right now, but he's got his Manganel on the, the Manganel, way over. The Manganel, the Manganel, down needs to be watching, and one of them goes out, the other oh. one is on a barely 1 HP. Oh, I, oh, I don't know. It was a very nice shot, right? But he, he did yeah. target the Manganel. I'm not sure about that. I guess it's a good job because he did take a whole lot of archers. And at this moment, when Doubt does not have any Look economy, the yep, uh, there oh, it is, and that's I guess uh, what made it. That's what made a nice spot there by Zach. <laughs> the yeah. uh, crossbows there on the woodline kind of mean GG here for Doubt. I guess was a nice decision, decision there for Chris, right? He couldn't do much with those crossbows considering there were three mangonels. He was able to take one of the mangonels from Doubt, but still doing a lot of damage on Doubt's economy, which at this point was not much of an economy anymore. Yeah, I mean, Chris knew that Doubt had come forward, so he knew that back at home, Doubt would probably be pretty open, so the counterattack was the perfect opportunity, like you say, against those three, um, against those three mangonels right there. Obviously, he doesn't want to send the crossbows into their deaths, but well played by Chris. That was a great game. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it all just started with the, the lack of wood for Doubt and that perfect tower at the front. 
denying the wood on the left, raiding the wood on the right. And it just goes to show how important wood is when it comes to uh, a game of Age of Empires 2. I guess uh, there were two major mistakes, in my opinion, from Dao here. The first one was just trying to go fast cancel when your opponent is forwarding you. I mean, yeah. people, many times people will think, well, it's okay, I could protect myself in this. But it ends up always being really, really hard to do that, right? And in my opinion, the second mistake was Dao just moving his archers towards Chris's base while he was getting attacked all over his own base. And I mean, yeah. I guess you can do that when you've got TCs, when you've got towers, but Dao didn't have any of those. So I think that was the second mistake, in my opinion. And by the time he got to Castle Age, he had barely any economy left. Yeah, of course. I mean, if you send your crossbows out and you can trade with your opponent, so like if they kill two of your villagers and your crossbows go and kill four of theirs, then obviously that's a risk and that you've taken and it's paid off. But what we actually saw happen was Dao moved out he didn't clear out the archers from Chris. He ended up losing a bunch of villagers, but he never traded back. He just he just died. Like his army died to to Chris.